Okay, hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be introducing a new topic, which is called diagonalization of matrices. So it's a very important topic in linear algebra with many applications. But the aim of this video is just to talk about general theory. Uh, so here the aim is to give clear definitions and to show you that the, the mathematics behind what we'll be doing is, is valid. And um, we leave the future videos for nice applications. All right, so let's begin here with this definition of what it means for two matrices to be similar. So we say that two matrices, which are square of the same dimension, A and B, they are similar if there exists this invertible matrix P such that this equation here holds. Okay, now, um, why is this concept important? Well, many properties of matrices are invariant under this relation of similarity. So for instance, if A and B are similar, then they have the same trace. And also what's important for our purposes is that if A and B are similar, then they'll have the same eigenvalues. And so let me just give you a quick explanation of why that's the case. Well, an eigenvalue, let's say that we have an eigenvalue lambda um, for B. That just means that it's a solution to the characteristic equation where I take b minus lambda i. And then if b is similar to a, then we can, we can uh, express b as, uh, as, as here. So that means that we can have uh, just a p inverse a p minus lambda. And now I'm going to write the identity matrix as just p times p inverse. So by the way, these two equations are identical just because we've replaced i and b just by um, different symbols here, and, and that's it. So that this is directly the same equation here. Okay, uh, and now we can make some factorizations. First thing is that uh, I've written this matrix wrong. Let's put p inverse first. So the first thing is here that we can factor out the p inverse, and we get this. And then we can factor out on the right the p. So we get your p inverse times a minus lambda i times p is equal to 0. And now we have a nice property of determinants, which is that uh, the determinant of a multiplication of matrices is just the multiplication of determinants here. So we just get this. And the nice thing about this is that multiplication of numbers is commutative, although multiplic multiplication of matrices in general is not. So anyways, we can um, uh, commute this, these p and its inverse together, and that will cancel out nicely. And so we'll just be left with this equation here, a minus lambda i is equal to 0. So this is just to say that lambda is an eigenvalue of A. And so what we've shown here is just that if lambda is an eigenvalue of B, then it's also going to be um, an eigenvalue of A. All right, so that's very nice. Similar matrices have exactly the same eigenvalues. Um, now, we can talk about what it means for a matrix to be diagonalizable. So th that's this concept uh, here. So a matrix is called diagonalizable simply if it is similar to a diagonal matrix, and that's it. So that just means that, okay, so to just expand this a bit, a matrix is diagonalizable, M is diagonalizable, if and only if there is an invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix let's say D. And by the way, what do I mean by diagonal? I'm sure you know, but it's just, it's a square matrix where the entries are just only, the only non-zero entries are on the main diagonal. So it's, it's any matrix of, of this form here, right? So there's zeros here all the way up to lambda n. So the only um, non-zero entries appear on the, the main diagonal. That's why it's called diagonal matrix. Okay, so there exists this uh, invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix D such that M 
um, is similar to it, which is just to say that if I take P inverse times M times P, I get this matrix D. Or I could have said M is equal to P, D, P inverse. It's exactly the same thing. So um, this is what it means for a matrix to be diagonalizable. And now by the previous result, um, you can see that um, the so by the previous result, we can see that the um, eigenvalues of D will be the same as the eigenvalues of M, if M is diagonalizable, which means that whatever this diagonal matrix is, it's going to have the eigenvalues of M along its main diagonal. The nice thing about diagonal matrices is if I look at this characteristic equation here of D minus lambda I, so in this case, if D is exactly equal to this matrix, well, this is going to be very, very simple. It's just going to be lambda 1 minus lambda, lambda 2 minus lambda, all the way up to lambda n minus lambda. And so th this tells you exactly that the only things making this zero, the only lambdas which make this zero are exactly given by lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So m being diagonalizable forces the entries along the main diagonal of this matrix to be the eigenvalues of the matrix uh, D, um, of the matrix uh, a, uh, M, sorry, M. Okay, good, so that's uh, just a, a, nice, uh, a nice fact here um, about diagonal ma diagonalizable matrices. All right, so uh, let's move on now. Um, so this is just a small, uh, just observation, very general observation about multiplication of matrices. But if we're given a matrix A, um, and we write A as just a, uh, a row vector of column vectors. So A, uh, the, the way that we've expressed A here, it's an n by n matrix, but the C are the columns. Okay, so the, the C1 here is the first column, C2 the second column, and so on. Uh, then what does it, how do we express multiplication by another matrix? Okay, so that's the, the main thing to see here, is that if we express A as these columns here, then multiplication by another square matrix on the on the right here is just going on the left sorry so multiplying p by a is just going to be the same thing as multiplying each column by p and that's quite a nice uh, property of matrix multiplication and so you can check this yourself it's um, very straightforward um, but that's the general fact that we'll be using and then another very important fact is that uh, if p were a diagonal matrix so P was equal to this diagonal matrix we, we said earlier. So it had this, uh, this form, it's lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2, and so on. Then the multiplication here um, by the column vectors has a, a, nice, a nice form. It's just going to be scalar multiplying each column. That's what, that's what the effect of multiplying by this diagonal matrix P would be. That's if P was this diagonal matrix here. Okay, good. So these are the two important facts here, which um, are going to allow us to make the main conclusion about uh, diagonalizing matrices. So let's see what that is. So we see here that um, if we're dealing with a diagonalizable matrix A, so if A is just some diagonal, di diagonalizable matrix, then we know that there exists an invertible matrix P. But let's, let's write P Whatever it is, let's, let's suppose that we write it as this, in this form, where x is just the columns. The x1, the x2, up to xn are just the columns. So just, maybe just to be clear, if we were dealing with a 2x2 with a two two matrix, and this is what it was, what I mean by expressing um, this as a, a column vector is that the columns here are going to be the, the x's, right? That's, that's all I mean by expressing p in, in this form here. Okay, so simple enough. Uh, so if we express P in that form, so A is diagonalizable and P is a matrix um, which diagonalizes that matrix A. So that means that there exists a diagonal matrix D whose entries again are just going to be uh, these entries along the main diagonal respectively. And being diagonalizable just means that this equation holds here. And the cool thing about this is that we can then uh, rewrite this equation, just multiplying both sides by, by P here, since uh, P is invertible, and we just get this matrix here, this matrix equation here. Great, so 
that means by what we said earlier, so if we just quickly go back here, we, we know how to express the um, multiplication of a matrix uh, P by a matrix A, which is expressed just as a sequence of columns. We have the two equations here, and that's precisely the situation we, we're in with diagonalization, right? We have um, uh, these two equations that are going to allow us to make our main conclusion, so let's go do that. So our main conclusion here is that uh, that means this, this left-hand side is just this side here, and the right-hand side here is just this, by what we saw earlier. And now when our two matrices equal, well, when their uh, entries are exactly equal at exactly every position, and so in particular, uh, each of the columns are, must be equal. So the first column of this matrix on that side must be the same as, on the left-hand side must be same as the first column on the right-hand side. And so we just see something. And that is that, uh, that's exactly what this is expressing. Axi must be equal to lambda Ixi. Which is just saying that whatever this matrix P is, the um, x is an eigenvector for the matrix A, and the lambda i is a cor its corresponding um, uh, eigenvalue. So that's a very important thing, because also um, this tells you how to construct, how, well, it actually tells you how to diagonalize a matrix. Everything is re reversible here. Uh, suppose you're given n, n um, of these vectors, then you could have set up the matrix P and the D uh, according to the eigenvectors as well as the eigenvalues of, of this matrix A. Okay, so that brings us to our main um, point here, um, and that's this sort of main theorem about uh, diagonalization. Uh, let me just get it. Okay, so here it is. So the main theorem about diagonalization here is just that um, if we're given a matrix A, an n by n matrix A, then it will be diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. Uh, That's it. And why is that the case? Because we can actually explicitly construct the matrix P, which diagonalizes the matrix A. Uh, so we can construct both the P and the D in, 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 that, um, in that case. So the matrix P is just constructed by um, just putting the eigenvectors into um, this matrix P. So we make the first column of the matrix P, the, the first eigenvector here, second column, and so on. And then, very importantly, we put the, um, the eigenvalues on the main diagonal of this matrix D in, s in, in order, which means that the first entry should co correspond to the, uh, the first eigenvector of P, and the second entry to the uh, uh, second entry, and so on. And then just by reversing the calculation we saw earlier, uh, we will get that this is going to be true here. So that um, P will diagonalize um, the matrix A. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, in the future videos, we will see um, some more um, important concepts involving diagonalization, uh, and in particular examples and uh, some nice applications. Okay, thank you very much.